Passage was not Recording read. in progress. Passage for today is Jonah 1, and I'm reading from 1 to 4. So when you have found it, stand and say Amen. Jonah 1, 1 to 4. Jonah 1, 1 to 4. When you have found it, say amen. And we stand for the reading of the word. Children, stand for the reading of the word, please. And it reads as such. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fear, he went ab aboard and sailed to Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose, and the ship threatened to break up. Here ends a portion, a portion of God's word. Amen, amen, amen. On your way to your seat, say, the alignment stand. On, the way, on your way to your seat, say, the alignment stand. The alignment stand, the alignment stand. And I promise I will not belong today. Life has a way of throwing us curveballs. And if you know anything about baseball, curveballs curve are unpredictable if it is that you watch that sport or even if you watch cricket you know um i don't remember the term that they use in cricket for those who watch cricket maybe you can help me out but the 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 the, the bouncers are whatever the term is in cricket but these balls are very unpredictable and sometimes we're going to go through some unpredictable things in our lives but what do we do when unpredictable things come what do we do? What is our posture when, 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 when unpredictable things come? Contrary to what we have in our mind or what we expected or what we want. Unpredictable things will happen. They must happen. You know why? They are going to happen because we don't have the blueprint to our own lives. I'm going to say that again because I don't want it to fly over anyone's head. Unpredictable things are going to come in our lives because we do not have the blueprint. Oftentimes we would like to have the blueprint for our own lives because we can say, okay God, all right, at this moment we're going to do this, at this moment we're going to do that. But the fact that we do not know what God has planned for us Anything that happens outside of what we think is going to be unpredictable. And unpredictable things hurt. <laughs> unpredictable things that happen to us hurt. I remember as I'm looking at her, I remember Sister Rochelle gave her testimony. We were here in church one Sunday. The Tuesday, right? The Tuesday she was in the hospital. Unpredictable. Did you know that that was going to happen? Did it hurt? Right. Because God is the one who has the blueprint. So he knows exactly what is going to happen. There is a way that seems right to a man. Proverbs 14 verse 12. But the end of that leads to destruction. I'm going to say it again. There is a way that seems right unto a man. Pastor Marshall. But the end of that is destruction. Sometimes I think we're too smart. You know, like, we're too smart. We've, we've gotten so educated that we've, okay, God, I can now share in what we do in, in, in our next step. And we, <laughs> I'm going to say it. We have to take a step back. And truly acknowledge that we do not know what we are doing. 
We have to take a step back and acknowledge that we truly do not know what we're doing. And we've heard this time and time again. Get out of the way. Move out of the way. You have to move before God move. God is not going to move around you. You have to move. If it's a straight line God is on and you are in the way for him to get to the next side, you have to move. And as I preach to you, I'm preaching to myself. Because <laughs> oftentimes as, as, as preachers, as, as pastors, we think that some of, some of the things that we see are not really for us. But the word will try us first. The message will try us first. So me standing behind this podium here, I have to move out the way for God to do what he needs to do through me. You have to move out the way also. Each and every one of us here, we have to move out the way. Because oftentimes we say this, God, it is your will but when he says okay unpredictability he said no god never really that media in have in mind still you know you couldn't just do it the look away here and you know what that is that's our intellect coming into play that's our intellect <laughs> tricking us sister nicole guys a trick really to think that we can give counsel to the true and living God, the omniscient God, the God who created wisdom. It is our simple intellect that, is, that has tricked us to say, no nah, man, I feel like I'm bright enough now, man. I have about four degree, PhD and all these things. I suppose you can, you know, say, God, we can't do it the way. Yeah. Because oftentimes, even though us and God is a partnership. We have to understand our place. We have to understand that, yes, it's a partnership between God and man, but we have to understand that God is still in front. <laughs> I was going through Isaiah. I don't remember exactly where it is, which passage, but Isaiah said, who gave you counsel? Who sat you down and taught you the right way? Sometimes we need to figuratively and literally we need a slap. Because sometimes we, 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 we treat God as if we grew up in basic school. And if he didn't know a problem, you would help him. And he would help you. You know, look up, friend something there. You help me, me help you. And that is how sometimes we treat God. Not understanding that ultimately it is God's will and God's way. Ultimately, the sovereignty of God determines that it is his will and his way. You know, we have a, we have a tendency to do this as church people. We, we say, okay God, I submit to your will. But God, again, and this is the intellect, God, I believe we can do it this way. So we don't truly say, God, it's your will and your way. We say, God, it's your will, but let us do it my way. And how long will it take us to get to the end of the road? Because God is a gentleman. Okay, it's your way. Okay, I'll sit and wait on you. Okay. Remember, I'm not bound to time, so I'll sit and wait on you. So whenever you decide that it is my way, I'm here. But as I've learned, the hard way, when I say the hard way, the hard way, that any time you choose to do anything your way, you are setting up let me not even put it like that. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end leads to destruction. One version said death. And it, must, it, it's, it, it may not be a physical death. I'm going somewhere, church. It may be that you're spiritually dead. 
And can I tell you that if you are spiritually dead, it is far worse. Far worse. If you are spiritually dead, church, it is far worse. Because you know why? You're in trouble and you don't even know it. You see, if you know you're in a trouble, you know, say, no man, you have to go get out of trouble. But Pastor Marsh, when you're in a trouble, you know, say you're in a trouble. You're in a double trouble. I remember preaching some time ago about being lost and don't even know that I was lost. I was going to my favorite beach in Portland, Frenchman Cove. I've been there some, I've been there more than once. So I said, no, man, I know the way. I'm a driver, I'm a driver, I'm a driver. I said, no, man, I feel like I'm lost. But I did not realize that I was lost until about 10, 15 minutes in the journey. Going the wrong way. So I was lost and don't even know that I was lost. You can be spiritually dead, which is twice as worse. <laughs> There is a way that seems right unto a man, but in the end leads to destruction. Somebody say, get on the alignment stand. We can be out of alignment or not in sync with God and do not know it. Unlike Jonah, Jonah knew, was in second guessing or spelling. He knew that he was out of alignment. But I ask the question, how many of us sitting here before me or will watch this after is out of alignment and do not know that you are out of alignment? How many of us sitting, listening to me now is out of alignment? For those who drive, your car can be out of alignment and you do not know. Your car can be out of alignment, church, and you do not know, you simply feel the wheel being hard to control. Jonah was out of alignment, intentionally out of alignment. And I ask the question, how many of us are intentionally out of alignment? Intentionally, not book ups are mistake, but intentionally out of alignment. Jonah was out of alignment and because of his will, he wanted his will and his way. He decided that God think them people are for saving him. Them people are evil. You know? <laughs> That's a message for another day. But can you believe Jonah now sitting in the seat of God? So now man, them people are evil. I think them fear the gospel. I think them fear both God and sin. For them to save them, intentionally taking his will and putting it before God. <laughs> the wheel was hard to control. Because really and truly, at the end of the day, as I mentioned before, it is God's will and God's way. I've had a car that has been out of alignment before. When you want to keep the car straight, it's like it's veering to one side. No matter how strong you think you be, you cannot keep it straight because the car is out of alignment. You can only truly know when your car is out of alignment when you let go of the wheel. When you let go of the wheel, Pastor Marshall, You'll realize that, yeah man, you don't have a wonder no more. Your car is definitely out of alignment. Because it veers to one side. It veers to one side. There are many of us who refuse to let go of the wheel. For God to show us that we are out of alignment. There are many of us here. And those who will watch after that is out of alignment with God. But we refuse to let go of the wheel. Because... You know, oftentimes we think that we are stronger than we are. 
But the strength that we are drawing on is a physical strength. So I say, no nah, man, I don't need to fill the golf of the wheel. It's strong enough, we can keep it straight. Not understanding, so not understanding that the more you hold on to the wheel, it's the worse the problem gets. The more you hold on to the wheel and use your physical strength, it's the worse it gets. Because it, it will not be addressed. You being out of alignment will not be addressed because you won't let go of the wheel. I say to you, church, let go of the wheel. And that will determine if you are out of alignment or not. If you are veering off the path that God has set for you, you are out of alignment. Get on the alignment stand, church. We'll never truly, truly, truly be aligned with God if we keep holding on to the wheel. Adversities will come to force us to let go of the wheel, Pastor Mash. You see, when we're our ears, I was stubborn. Again, I'm going back to the car. If you do not align that car, your life is on the line. Literally, your life is on the line. You can be going straight. Oh, I'm driving. And because it has gotten so bad because you have refused to let go of the wheel. Oops. Because it has gotten so bad. Adversities will come and force you to let go of the wheel. I say to each person here, do not allow adversity to force you to let go of the wheel. Hmm. We sing, Jesus take the wheel, take it from my hands. That's what he wants to do. That's what he really wants to do. He really wants to be the one that drives us around. He wants to be the one to say, no nah, man, you're, you're veering off path. I've set the way for you, but you have, you have veered off the path that I have set. Come on the alignment stand. Do not allow adversities. Do not allow... Let me see it like this. Do not force the hand of God. Do not force the hand of God, church. If you know that you are out of alignment, don't waste no time. Don't waste time. But destruction is, wasn't far. As soon as he decided to run. See Pastor Marshall laughing. I'm not even going to look at him. As soon as Jonah decided to run. To no man, may I go the next way? God caused a great storm. I want you to understand how great the storm was that even the ship was being threatened to break into pieces. Adversity, calamity, I would take him. And even when that happened, him said, nah, man. God, no matter where you do, my outer alignment and I'm my way, may I go. May I go the opposite direction, Sister Nikki. Because I'm my way. But the way that seems right unto a man, the end of it is destruction. 
him. And if and God is so merciful, even though we are out of alignment, even though we may be out of alignment, God is still merciful. I always hear this saying, we're lucky God is not like man. We're lucky God is not like man. And I say it to us again, we are very lucky. Scrap that. We are very blessed that God is not like man. Because even though Jonah knew exactly what was happening, you know what? The Bible says he was sleeping. While everyone else was cowering and, and running and uh, relieving things from the, from the ship. Jonah was fast asleep. Because he knew he was allowed. He was the one that was out of alignment. And it, ne Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because Jonah was out of alignment, it nearly, nearly cost the lives of those around him. Because... Oh, God. Because Jonah was out of alignment, it nearly cost the lives of those around him that did not know anything about what was going on nearly cost them their lives because one man was out of alignment but God is merciful God is merciful God is merciful and he's gracious but now wait until it reached the gracious and the mercy part you see if you know and you know, and you know, don't wait until it have to get to that. When he was overthrown from the ship church, God caused a great fish to swallow him up. Because I want you to think with me in a church, if the, if, if the storm was so great that it would break the ship apart, it was threatened to break the ship apart, what would it do to a human being? What would it have done to Jonah? If they had thrown him out and the fish did not uh, swallow him, what would it have done to him? Now, physical death would have been sure. So I say to us, church, God is merciful. God is gracious. But don't wait until I have to throw you overboard. For the fish, I forgot to swallow you. And then you're going to say, all right, God, I'm ready now. I say this, church, in closing. God's mercy and his grace is new every day. But everyone will not get the same opportunity to come back. Some persons will go through a particular thing and make it back home. But some will go through even less. And die. We do not have the blueprint for our lives, church. So do not say, okay, let us see where this goes. Let us see where my way take me. I can tell you, I'm not a prophet, but I can tell you destruction. According to the Bible, your way leads. To destruction. After we have gone around and around and around. Ultimately, it's God's will. And it should be God's way as well. Hallelujah. Second Peter 3. And I close with this. Second Peter 3 verse 9. And it reads, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I'm going to go again. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, 
But listen this. But everyone to come to repentance. I'm led to read it one more time. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you. Not wanting anyone to perish. But everyone to come to repentance. Church. He wants each of us to come to repentance if it is that we are out of alignment come to repentance if we are sinners and need to be born again come to repentance if it is that we have veered off the path because we have held on to the wheel so long come to repentance if we have said god it's your will but it's my way come to repentance because ultimately if God's intention is to go to the back of the church and you are standing in the way he will not go around you you will have to move because it is God's will and God's way These are my few words to us. I, I pray, I pray, I pray that it will seep in your spirits, church. That we should get on the alignment stand. Where is the alignment stand? In God's presence. Get on the alignment stand. So he can show you to what degree you need aligning. To show you with what aspect of your life need aligning. To show you. <laughs> if you let go the wheel. This is where you are. This is far from where you need to be or where you should be. This is where I want you to be. On the path that gives me glory. Amen. Bow your heads with me, church. Father, I thank you for your word. Father, I thank you for what you have done throughout this service. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that as you are the true and living God, Father, and as you have spoken today, as you have moved today, Father, I seal every word, Father God, that has been spoken in this atmosphere. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that by your Holy Spirit, Father, you, your word is yea and amen, Father. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that your holy will be done. Father, I pray, God, that this word will challenge the heart of your people. Father, it will rest on your people. And Father... More importantly, change will come. Father, I give you thanks again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen.